let's take a look at this middle strip of the Mandelbrot set. The image below shows the bifurcation diagram of the logistic map. There is a clear similarity between the two. Looking from right to left, we start with a single line on both diagrams. Then we see a split into two branches, then another to four, and finally chaos. The Mandelbrot set is defined by this equation, and the logistic map is defined as, when I first saw this comparison, I was fascinated and it motivated me to investigate the not so obvious but necessary relationship between the Mandelbrot set and the logistic map. The logistic map is an equation that predicts population growth through time. Depending on the initial size and this parameter r, the population could increase or the population could decrease. Let the value r sometimes referred to as the bifurcation parameter, B1.2, and the initial population set at 60%. We can find the population after our first time interval by using the equation. And we can repeat this to find the next population values. But what we are more interested in is the long-term behavior Take note of the bifurcation parameter. When we make small adjustments, we can see that the long-term behavior can change drastically. For certain values of R, we see a convergence to a fixed point. When we raise the value to 3.2, we see that the population starts oscillating between two values. And if we adjust it slightly again, we start to see a four cycle. An interesting way to visualize this is by using a bifurcation diagram. The horizontal axis represents our bifurcation parameter, and the vertical axis describes the long-term behavior of our population. When the value of r is 1, we take the last few points of our logistic map and plot it in our bifurcation diagram. And we continue this process for different values of r. Imagine that there is about 200 dots and we are plotting the last few values of that 200. Let's see what happens when we slowly adjust the parameter. Initially, the bifurcation diagram shows that the long-term behavior converges to a fixed point. Then it branches into two, which is reflected in the logistic map on the left. Then each branch branches again. And finally, chaos. The logistic map is interested in the long-term behavior of a population, and it demonstrates how a small change in the initial condition can drastically change the long-term outcome. The Mandelbrot set is defined by iterating this equation and seeing whether the long-term behavior is bounded. Let's check if negative 0.5 plus 0.6i is in the Mandelbrot set. By using the equation, we can find our second value, and third value, and so on. But what we are interested in is again, the long-term behavior. Notice how some initial points are bounded, and some points shoot off into infinity. By the criteria of the Mandelbrot set, initial points outside the set diverge to infinity. 
while the initial points in the set are bounded. Also, notice how there seems to be a cyclical nature to the points in the Mandelbrot set, such as a two cycle and a three cycle. If you have ever seen an image like this, the numbers represent the cycle that the points in that region enter. There is a clear relationship between the Mandelbrot set and the logistic map, as they are both looking at the long-term behaviour of their corresponding equations. So how do we get visualisations like this? And why does the middle strip of the Mandelbrot set and the bifurcation diagram of the logistic map look so similar? Let's say we had a function that describes a square. Some properties of this square include, if we perform linear transformations such as translation, rotation, or scaling it up or down, the integrity of the properties are maintained. The way we can show that one function is a linear transformation of another is by showing that this criteria is met. Remember the Mandelbrot function and the logistic map equation. Let us substitute in the corresponding values. By simplifying this down and collecting like terms, we can find A and B, and therefore our value C. In other words, the logistic map is a linear transformation of the Mandelbrot set if C is equal to this. We can go further by substituting Z sub N as the Mandelbrot function can now be written. Let's see what happens when we simplify this down. Not only are these functions related, but they are describing exactly the same thing. We need to find a way to plot the long-term behaviour of the Mandelbrot set. This is easily achieved for the logistic map, as we have one dimension for the initial value and one dimension for the long-term behaviour, giving us a two-dimensional diagram. However, the Mandelbrot set is two-dimensional, and the long-term behaviour is also two-dimensional, which means we need four spatial dimensions to truly visualise the long-term behaviour of every point. Because of this, we need to adjust what we measure, and unfortunately this means that we will lose some information. You may have noticed that the visualisation at the start of this video, although similar, did not look exactly like the logistic map. This is because it was generated by measuring the long-term behaviour of the modulus or the distance to the origin. And I suspect that we are losing too much information, such as the direction of each point to the origin. Another value that we can measure is the real component of each point. Or in other words, the distance and direction from the y-axis. Now we have another one-dimensional value that can help us visualise the cycles. Remember, we are checking the long-term behaviour by iterating the equation of the Mandelbrot set.
Let's see what happens when we go along the x-axis. Now let's plot this on a bifurcation diagram. If we continue the same process for every point in the Mandelbrot set, we get this visualization. <laughs> 